to be with you. Uh, my name's Rick Odland, if we've never met. Uh, I'm the leader of a church in the north of England on the coast called the Well Baptist Church, Well Church. And uh, also I'm the leader of Harvest Alliance, formerly known as Partners in Harvest. So uh, I have happy memories of being with you and I'm really delighted to be with you again this morning just to share God's word and bring a greeting. Boy, oh boy, do we need each other at the moment as churches and leaders. Uh, just so many things are happening around us. I don't know where I'd be if I wasn't in touch with so many other leaders around the UK and the world, in fact, hearing what they're doing, learning from them, strengthening, encouraging and building each other up. So I hope that during our time together today, we get to do just that. We get to um, hear not only an encouraging word, but also to feel that sense of connection and sense of being part of a bigger thing that God is doing. So God bless you. And uh, we're going to come to the word right now in a moment. So here we are, everybody. Great to be together. And as always, we open God's word to hear what he has to say to us and ask the Holy Spirit to come. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity today to come to your word, come to the living, active, breathing word of God that is full of the Holy Spirit, full of delight, full of things for us to hear. As we come to it, Lord, stir our hearts, bring things to our imagination, to our emotions to our spirits that will be food for us for the weeks and for the days that lie ahead. Amen. Well, uh, I just want to share with you an obvious statement, really. Uh, for two or three years, I've been saying to the churches that I lead, everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken in these days. And we're going to need a bold proclamation of the gospel to meet the despair and the darkness that we're going to find in society, the gloom. And literally, as we say at Christmas, the Christmas message, those who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. And may it be that your church represents part of that light, part of that life that people are drawn to out of the gloom and out of the darkness. And really, that's a theme for us to think about at the moment, which is, Lord, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to our circumstances and to our situation? because I believe God is speaking. And it's a very well-known scripture. I'm sure you've heard it. Uh, Isaiah 43, 18 begins with this. Forget the former things. Paul the Apostle said, I forget what is past and I press on. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? And that's a really good question that the Lord's asking us all, isn't it? Are you perceiving what I'm doing right now? And I want to challenge you as a leadership and as a church to, to go to the place of prayer, go to the scriptures, go to uh, have times together where you can say, what is the Lord saying to us? Have the fresh bread of a fresh revelation in the days in which we live. Now it springs up. I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the, in the wasteland. So what may look like wilderness and wasteland is actually the place where God is working. And as I began to think about those words and think about you guys and uh, think about what God is saying across the nations to the body of Christ, that I'm certainly the, the part of the body that I connect to anyway, uh, as we think about the new thing, I was reminded of the fact that when God speaks, things happen. And I want to encourage you with that idea today. When God, th when God speaks, creative things begin to happen and God is speaking to our generation. Uh, we're, we're not uh, at the, the end of the line. We're just people alive now and others will come after us. Others went before us. The days that they had were different. And, and that word that's there in the book of Acts about King David, it said he served the purposes of God for his generation. And I want to encourage you to serve the purposes of God for your generation, for this time in which we're alive. We're in unusual days. We haven't been here before. But, you know, take hold of that truth that God is speaking in the wilderness. And, and there will be streams of revelation, streams of the Holy Spirit's power, might and work in the wastelands that we have to walk through. 
So as we look at Genesis chapter one, what we find is that when God speaks, creation happens. In Genesis chapter one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And just, we could just spend the rest of our time unpacking that, can we? In the beginning, that means before there was a COVID-19 or a situation or a pandemic or, you know, things going on in the nations, there was God. God is the author. God is in charge of everything. He's the Lord of history and of all creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Again, there it is, waters and the spirit of God. And God said, let there be light. He spoke and we have this amazing uh, prophetic declaration. God said, and there was. God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, God saw that light was good and he separated light from darkness. And so what we find is that when God speaks, so often it's a voice of change and he gets his people ready like he did with Isaiah, where he said, I'm speaking to you now. Forget the former things. Get ready for the new thing that I'm doing. And you may ask, Rick, what is that new thing that God is doing? And I'll come on to that because I think that what he's doing is he's resetting the church. He's reshaping our priorities towards um, evangelism, towards discipleship. We're being moved out of things and moved into other things. We're going to look at the life of Abraham for a short time. But let there be light. Creative words create new things. Creative energy produces impossible results that were not possible or even understood before they happened. The same is true when Jesus the Messiah came into the world. No one had believed our message to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed. And then there he was, born of a virgin in Bethlehem and born in the cover of darkness. Darkness happened and light broke through. We live in those days when God is breaking forth again with his light and he's doing it in the church to start with. And so we've moved out of or are being moved out of habitual church attendance into uh, determined and uh, de decisive discipleship. So what I'm finding in the churches I talk to and in my church is the people woke up. There was a sudden sh jolt and we were woken from regular church attendance, regular things that we used to do. All of that stopped. And so we were left thinking, well, who are we? Who, what is our purpose? What is our destiny and identity? And it is, well, we're, we're here as Christians to bear witness to Jesus. And so we've been on a journey this year of more, the most unusual journey. But I would say it's probably one of the most fruitful years, even in lockdown. We've visited more homes, more people, more people on the edges of society, more people in uh, places, you know, they would come to our messy church or to our, um, you know, events. But now we're going to their homes and we're being a blessing in our community. And I want to encourage you. That's what God is saying to you as well. A new thing for a new day. God is raising up a discipled community of believers who will go and find Jesus in the community because that's where he is right now. And he's calling us to come out and come and join him. And speaking of calling, uh, one in Genesis chapter 12, God calls Abraham. And in that call to Abraham, he says, go from your country, go from your people, go from your father's house, go to the land that I will show you and I will make you into a great nation. So he takes this elderly couple who, who believe their life is coming to an end. You know, they're just just dialing it down and suddenly God breaks in. And he says to them, hey, it's time to get up and start moving. Well, we're old. We can't. We, we, we're used to this now. We don't have any children. You know, our life's going to come to an end and no one will remember us. And God says, I'll make you a great nation. God does impossible things when he speaks. Things that seem impossible to us are made possible when he speaks a word. And I will bless you. And I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. We all know this Genesis 12, 1 to 4. 
And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. I've got guys in my church right now who are missionaries in their mid to late 70s in other nations planting churches and starting new ministries. Guys, this is not the time to sit down. It's the time to stand up. And there will be a generation of seniors and retired people who are refired people ready for what God has for them, which is to birth a new generation, incidentally. He's going to raise up from the stones of the ground. He's going to raise up a revival generation, possibly even an end time generation. But he's going to need us to go on duty one more time and watch as he does that new thing and be ready to serve in it. And so Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And when God speaks to us in these ways, it, part of what he wants to say is, guys, you need to get over yourself. You need to get over the, the, the barrier or the wall of your own emotions. And imagine what it must have felt like for a 75 year old Abraham just settled and comfortable, you know, just got the, the lounge how he likes it, the kitchen how he likes it. And God says, time to leave this now. And, and you know, the, the pull of the comfort zone, the pull. I hear some people say, oh, it'd be great when we get back to. We're not going back to what we had before. That's gone. You know, deal with the emotion of what, what was 2018, 2019, 2020 even. That's gone now. What's God doing in your ministry, in your church now? That's the real question. I want to encourage you. Uh, deal with the emotions and the pull of the comfort zone that pulls you back. And, and this is not a season to bury your talents either. And so comfort is like a gravitational pull. Uh, the story of the buried talents in Jesus's parable was a story of a man who feared God in the wrong way. Abraham feared him by believing that he was good and by believing that his word was true. But in that parable, there was a person who thought, oh, he's a hard taskmaster. What if I get it wrong? What if it doesn't work? I better just take what he gives me and bury it. Don't in this season of your life as a church bury his talents. And then, of course, uh, there's the regrets of missed opportunities. And Ecclesiastes says, whoever watches the clouds and listens to the wind never sows anything. And sometimes we have to be uh, fire aim ready people. And it's hard to be around those prophetic voices and those, those people who are all over the place, it seems. But God is releasing uh, us from... Uh, just the disappointment of getting to the end of it all and saying, oh, if only we'd done that, if only we'd we'd risked that, if only we'd taken that opportunity. I want to encourage you, this is a time to do something for God. This is a year to do something for God. And, and we start with Abraham by hearing what God is saying, which is different, it's new and it's change, and to embrace the cost and the emotion. And that's my second point, that that really what we have to do is count the cost and we have to give. And I want to encourage you to be givers this year, uh, as Abraham was. Abraham gave up his dream for God's promise. And I just I really felt in the spirit when I shared, you know, this word with the Lord before. I, this You're hearing it for the first time, by the way. But when I was praying this through, God said to me, there is a difference between your dreams and my promises. Your dreams may or may not happen. God's promises will happen. They are yes and amen. So wouldn't it be a good thing to uh, give up our, our dreams and possibly even our smallness and take hold of the big promises of God? As, it, as Jim Elliott said, you know, attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. Could have been uh, another missionary actually that said that. But let's give up our dreams and let's take hold of God's promises. You can find them all in the Bible. Um, let's give in to the process of refining. And we have to, uh, as Abraham did, he went through a refining process. He got on a journey without fully knowing where he was going. And there were 
times in that journey where God stopped him and refined his vision and corrected his vision and taught him new things that he hadn't known before. And that's the adventure of it all, is you can learn new things from the Lord in this season. And I want to encourage you uh, to give in to that process of discipleship and refining and sanctification. As it says in Isaiah 54, enlarge the place of your tents. That's a whole message right there. Just increase your heart and your expectation for God. Give in to the process and then learn to give out. One of the things that God promised to um, Abraham in Genesis 12 is I'm going to make you a blessing. And we probably would like to hear a word that says, I'm going to give you a blessing. Uh, here it is. Here's your present. I'm going to give you a blessing. But what God says to Abraham, which is the Christian life, is I'm going to make you a blessing. Through you, I will bless the nations. So that means we receive and we give. We receive and we give. And to whom do we give? It is those who aren't with us right now. There are people who are yet to be born, people yet to receive Christ in your community right now, waiting for somebody to bring them hope. And I want to just encourage you. Remember what I said about um, when God speak, change happens. Genesis 1. That's the best picture of evangelism. You see, we tend to look around in society and think, oh, well, there's nothing happening, so I'm not going to speak. Or people will be against the message, so I'm not going to speak. The word says, let there be light. Speak and light will happen. And I want to encourage you this year to get on a mission where you will speak into darkness and into the void of people's lives and light will happen. Something will be created. The lights will go on because you spoke. God will create in that person life at the word that you share, your testimony, the message of the cross, create life. And I want to encourage you, that's how evangelism works. It doesn't we don't wait for the conditions for life. We start with no conditions and we create the conditions by speaking. It's a miracle when people get saved. It's an absolute hallelujah, raised from the dead miracle. And I would love you to rejoice in the baptisms and in the salvations that are going to come because you took this word seriously and you began to step out by faith into the miracles of God, create life by speaking about the one who is the life. So coming back to Abraham for a moment on his journey, God's saying to us, hey, embrace the emotions of, of letting go of something and taking hold of something that you're not quite sure is there yet. Count the cost by giving up your dreams for his promises, by giving in to the process of refining and learning again to be a disciple by giving out the gospel. And if we'll do that, then we also get Abraham's reward. Through you, I will bless all nations. And that's great. And we get to, we're blessed to be a blessing. But God says, I am is with you. And I want you to know that God is with you. God loves you. He's not, he's not finished with your church. He's not finished with your life. He's with you now. And when he comes, when, when dad's in the house, when the father comes, when the spirit of God comes into your soul that cries out, Abba, father, that's the reward. The reward is his presence, his pleasure and his words over your life. That's what kept Jesus going in the midst of immense pressure, immense rejection, immense persecutions and difficulties during his ministry is every day he heard these words you are my child whom I love in you I'm well pleased Abraham walked in the delight of the father and so can you and so Abraham went as the Lord told him and I want to encourage you as you hear this word today go with God go as the Lord has told you don't hold back don't don't wait, as it were. Don't be passive in this season. God is speaking. God is moving. God is creating new possibilities. And the joy that we'll have is sharing our stories in the kingdom of God. Maybe even meeting together, hearing the testimonies and 
There just isn't time today to share with you all the testimonies where we've seen God at work and doing amazing things and changing people's lives because we got up and followed him. So there it is, folks. I hope uh, you're encouraged to um, embrace the emotions and the cost of change that God is doing a new thing. He's speaking to us. Much of what he wants to say to us is uh, get out and get amongst people. I'd even want to encourage you if you're on a Zoom or if it's a pre-recorded session, invite people to come to your online broadcasts. Invite people to come and hear a message of hope and encouragement like this one. God has a plan. Jesus is on the throne. He's doing a new thing in our time and we're going to go with him. God bless you.